Well, it is a pleasure for me to be here today and to speak uh, after Andrew, who has uh, really inspired many and will continue to inspire many by tracking uh, progress on what companies are doing to advance sustainability. I forgot my... for the slides. <laughs> this is good. And it's also a pleasure to, of course, to speak after Teresa. Teresa, I think in Spain, is probably the person that know, knows most about climate change. I mean, it is a privilege to us to have Teresa flying around the world because she doesn't stop. And, and that requires a lot of sacrifice, personal sacrifice, because she's here for the cause. She's been here for many, many years. She will continue to be. And, um, and I think she, she's a true representative of Spain, uh, of, the, of the knowledge of the advancements on how we can do good policies to advance sustainability. And if we are here, uh, in some ways, it's, it's thanks to the work that she has done until now. Um, I think it's great to be in Barcelona today, no? because I see here a football ball, and I'll see if you smile, if you're from Barcelona or not. Congratulations, Vizca Barça. You did a great year, so it's great to be here. And great to be here in the University of Navarra, because this is where I started. I studied in the University of Navarra in Pamplona, my hometown. So, quite happy to be here. So I work for the WBCSD, the World Business Council for Sustainable Development. And this is an organization, organization that has 200 big multinationals. It has been working for the past 20 years in advancing sustainable development, in advancing progressive uh, views on how business can do better. And we are trying to help business be more sustainable and be recognized for being more sustainable, because it's very important, because until now, that recognition sometimes is not there. And I think, well, we have seen, we need to improve in the way we measure progress and in the way we measure business being more sustainable. Business cannot succeed in societies that fail. This has been the, the quote which uh, the, the first president of the Business Council um, came up with and defined very well what sustainability was about in the 19th, in the beginning of this century. It is business, you know, they, they cannot work in a, in a world that is devastated no? by climate change or by other impacts, and they realize that. But in some ways, it's a defensive attitude, and, and maybe it, it is also, it, it was what uh, triggered business to understand more what the impacts were, and, and to do so, during the 19th, we created different uh, tools, for example, the GHG protocol. It was uh, a couple of decades where lots of knowledge emerged by analyzing what are the impacts of business and society in the environment, and you know, what could we do to, to mitigate those impacts. No? But I like it much more, uh, the time and the area in where we are now. Now it's the area of collaboration, and now it's the area of all rowing together towards a common objective. No? Now we understand very well, there is a lot of knowledge available, and we understand that we need to scale up uh, solutions to the different challenges that are well documented by the IPCC report and by many excellent research that has been done. No? We need to scale up solutions, we need to redefine value, and we need to enhance collaboration. And what we are seeing at WBCSD in the last uh, few years is precisely that business are aware that they cannot do this alone, and they need to partner with other business to do more and to do better. Back in 2011, WBCSD created a product which was called Vision 2050. Our vision is that we need to create a world which more than 9 billion people are all living well within the limits of the planet. And this is not easy, but what we did is with uh, 50 companies, we, we agreed on which were the pathways that will lead us to that vision 2050. We anticipated that we were going to enter into the turbulent ten, ten teens, right? and uh, we have seen uh, you know, impacts of climate change, impacts of fire, um, social unrest, the refugee crisis, more and more extreme events. So, so one would think that we are not in a good pathway. Um, because we saw that this was coming, WBCSD created Action 2020, because we knew that 2050 was too far, and we needed to do something now. 
And this is what I'm here to talk to you about, is how we have done it, how we have started to think about the implementation now and uh, live. It is good to have ambition, it is good to have long-term plans, but we need to do something today. And through Action 2020, in collaboration with Johan Rockstrom from the Stockholm Resilience Center, we, create, we identified nine priority areas where we needed to do something if we didn't want to surpass the planetary boundaries. And those are climate change, nutrient elements, ecosystems, harmful substances, water, basic needs and rights, skills and employment, sustainable lifestyles, and food, feed, fi fiber, and biofuels. And I have to say that 2015 was an extraordinary year for humanity. No? We had two big accomplishments on one hand, the Sustainable Development Goals, on the other one, the Paris Agreement. Now what business needs to do is to take a close look at the SDGs and figure out in which sectors, in, wi in which SDGs each sector needs to contribute. Which are the SDGs that are material to the companies and where action is, needs to happen and where and what are the actions that businesses are going to do and how are we going to track progress, etc. So I think we are very well equipped with uh, knowledge, with metrics, and with a very clear uh, pathway to sustainability. Now we need to act and we need to do it now. In terms of Paris, what happened in Paris, I think for those that have been following this for many years, was something that we couldn't even imagine. At uh, WBCSD, we joined a coalition which is called we mean business. And, um, and we agreed on, a several, uh, on the following uh, asks, policy asks. These are the elements we wanted to see in Paris, in the Paris Agreement. And we had <laughs> developed a strategy thinking, well, probably we won't get them all. What is the, the worst case scenario? But surpri surprisingly, we got them all. And in the same for the civil society, NGOs, etc. So it is true what Teresa mentioned, there was an alignment of different elements that made this possible. And the business buy-in and business actions uh, that were gathered around the action agenda were fundamental. So through Women Business Coalition, there were 386 commitments that were made by business. Through the Low Carbon Technology Partnership Initiative, which is the initiative that I, I managed last year, we had more than 150 companies agreeing on, on, on a shared vision and a shared common actions. No? And, um, and so I think the business contribution, the business belief that we needed to have an ambitious uh, uh, agreement, it was fundamental. We're still not there. Carbon pricing, the levels are really low. Fossil fuel uh, subsidies still exist in many parts of the world. And we still don't know how to measure good practices in a way, how to include other elements that are not the typical GDP, no? how to, to include environmental and social considerations in the way we report progress, both for companies and for economies. But certainly we know that we need to do that and that's the direction where we are heading. No? And what business thinks, what is next in the climate? Because after Paris, there was a bit of a valley. No? I mean, we got everything we wanted. Many people changed jobs. Uh, and we just needed to find, you know, what is the next milestone. In my view, the next milestone is going to be 2018. By then, the countries need to review their INDCs, their national emission reduction targets. And what we need to do, the business community, is agree amongst us on how we are also going to quantify our contribution to, to that milestone. And we are already doing it with the women business, with the work that we did last year with PwC. We want to progress, uh, we track progress of companies towards these objectives. No? And, and now we meet, no, need to move from ambition to implementation. And I just love this picture, no? because this, the solar impulse was arriving to San Francisco, and it shows how innovation is every day surprising us even more. I mean, you see clouds, you see San Francisco, you know that it was a long journey to get there, but we did it, no? And we did it with solar energy. And one would say, yeah, but it's very expensive to do it, no? Yes, it's true. But here there are two elements that are important. One is renewables and the other one is transport. So let me talk about renewables. We are seeing every day that renewable energy is cheaper. We are seeing that it's competitive and it's increasingly reliable. So the future is going to be renewable. But our biggest challenge today is to deal with transport. 
And I came here and it took me an hour and a half when, you know, in my iPhone it says 20 minutes, no? So I think uh, there are some big issues that still need to be resolved. And, and in WBCSD, transport is going to be one that we want to tackle in the next few years. Let me briefly talk to you about the Low Carbon Technology Partnership Initiative. At WBCSD, we do something really good. Is we come up with acronyms that no one can explain. <laughs> so, so anyway, this is one of them. It's called LCTPI. And it was quite complex to get to the acronym, and I will save you the story. But what you need to know is that we work around nine uh, key areas. Renewable, CCS, buildings, uh, cement, freight, biofuels, climate smart agriculture, forest, and chemicals. And for each of the, those areas, we, have a we had a very clear timeline, and we had a process. And process is a word that sometimes is not very popular, but it's fundamental you know, for business. Because we need to know where we start, and we need to know where we want to finish, and what are the deliverables that we want to have by when. No? And this is business. No? And so that's what we did. And we first agree for each of the groups on what was the ambition of each, uh, of each area. Then we agree, agreed on what, which were the barriers to achieve that ambition, and finally we came with a set of action plans. We engaged with more than 150 companies. Uh, we went around the world on regional dialogues, so we went to, to Beijing, to, to, to Durban in South Africa, to Sao Paulo, to Melbourne, to London, to Paris, to New York. And we tested the different action plans with many, many people, with 1,000 participants. And at the end of the day, of the journey, we ended up doing a bunch of reports that summarize what we had done. But what is important is not the report. What is important is the co-creation that happened during last year, where business together, competing business, agreed on what was the pathway, what was the ambition, and what were the barriers that collectively we needed to overcome. Because as I said at the beginning, both the climate change and sustainability you know, cannot be tackled alone. We all know that. We need to collaborate. Even if we compete, it, it's not. We can still collaborate in removing some of the barriers that will help business be better and be valued for being better and more sustainable. We asked PwC to do an analysis on how much uh, the LCTPI could contribute to the emission reductions. And they came with this bold number, 65% of the way to a two degree world. This will happen if everything, if all, everything is aligned. If the policies are in place, in business invest in these technologies, etc. It is a very ambitious number. It is, you know, the potential that this initiative had. And now what we need to do is to create some KPIs so that we track progress. And we are continuing to meet, and next week we will meet in San Francisco. And there we will launch a very innovative initiative, uh, which is called Below 50. Below 50 is a campaign to increase the perception that low-carbon transport fuel have a role to play and can reduce emissions. And we will only accept in this campaign technologies, investors, consumers that, uh, uh, that use uh, low-carbon uh, fuels that at least reduce emissions by 50%, at least. There are some that are 80 or 100%. Because we need to decarbonize transport, and because we need electric vehicles, but we also need low-carbon transport fuels, and because we need to explore different routes, and that's what we want to do now. And uh, if you want to know more, please let me know. This will, the campaign will be launched next week in San Francisco. And then we will go to Marrakesh uh, in, in November, and we want to present progress there. And for us, it's very important that the governments at that moment don't uh, go behind. You know, sometimes in the climate process, they go two steps front and three behind, or not anyway. We hope that they continue walking towards this direction. And we're going to create um, a conference of solutions with the government of Morocco, SDSN and ICLE, where we want to present uh, to the different delegations that are doing the INDCs you know, how much technology has, has progressed, uh, what are the best practices. Because there's something that I believe <laughs> that is very important. No one will stop anyone from copying to what has been successful. No? And there are good examples that we can learn. We cannot copy what we fail, but we can copy what has been successful. No? And so, to conclude, I thought I would bring, you know, this, uh, who doesn't know the park well, Sagrada Familia and Gaudí. 
I think it is a notice that shows very much as well, you know, the situation where we are we can, today, and we can learn a lot. Gaudi managed to integrate the environment in his art. He managed to integrate the best know-how of the time in his uh, masterpieces. And I think we all need to do this now. No? We, we can get the best technologies. No? We can integrate them into uh, taking a holistic view and integrating them in the environment. And that's the way forward. And so I'm very glad that Sustainable Brands takes place in this wonderful city and with such an inspiration as, as Gaudi. So muchas gracias, and I hope to learn more with you today. <laughs>